It's Sunday, November 29th. I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block. Controversy over the COVID-19 vaccine and criticism of the federal government's performance falling behind other countries in getting the vaccine for Canadians has been the top of the headlines and the biggest conversation across this country. Premiers have criticized the federal government for not being clear on how many doses the provinces and territories will get. And more importantly, when exactly Canada will receive it. Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominic LeBlanc joins me now. Thank you so much for making time for us, Minister LeBlanc. I'm going to ask you the question that a lot of Canadians have on their mind right now, and that is, where is Canada in the queue to get vaccines? Are, are we in the top five, the top 10, the top 20? Where are we at? So a very good question. We're certainly in the top five, uh, Mercedes. Uh, as we have said from the beginning, uh, we as a government, as a national government, aggressively negotiated contracts with seven major suppliers of potential vaccines. The three that appear the first to likely be approved uh, for use because they're safe and effective, um, AstraZeneca, uh, Moderna and Pfizer. Uh, we have literally millions of doses under contract and the first six million doses, which would vaccinate probably three million Canadians, because again, it appears that Two doses will be required to achieve the appropriate level of, uh, of immunity. Uh, those will start arriving in early January. So uh, very quickly thereafter, they'll ramp up. And from other vaccine suppliers, as they get approved, we hope for, for use as, as being safe and effective by, by Health Canada, uh, they'll be available for Canadians. And the work we're doing right now, Mercedes, which we talked about with the premiers on Thursday evening, is to ensure that we have a very, very effective and efficient logistics system to roll out these vaccines safely at two provinces and territories so we can start immunizing Canadians on the very first opportunity. So if we are in the top five, but that is just those initial vaccines that are showing up that are going to vaccinate less than 10% of the Canadian population, uh, whereas we could see the United States starting mass vaccinations well ahead of that, why is it that we are further behind other countries that are, that are similar to Canada? Um, so as the Prime Minister indicated this week, the capacity to manufacture on a very large scale, the biomanufacturing capacity in Canada, uh, had eroded over the last 20 years. And particularly, for example, AstraZeneca, which is likely to be one of the first vaccines, closed their manufacturing facility in Canada in 2007 when Mr. Harper was prime minister, and then their research facility in Montreal in 2012, again, when Mr. Harper was in power. So this tendency, uh, to send to other jurisdictions the massive biomanufacturing capacity means that Canada has to procure, to buy internationally from these companies massive quantities of the vaccines. And the good news is we've done exactly that. And they will arrive safely and efficiently in Canada, obviously as soon as they're determined by Health Canada and other regulatory authorities to be safe for use. Uh, so at the same time, though, Mercedes, because... Uh, it is correct to say that we need to develop that biomanufacturing capacity in Canada. We've announced hundreds of millions of dollars of investment, not only in a Quebec company called Medicago, which has a potential Canadian vaccine candidate, but in the National Research Council facilities in Montreal to ensure that as quickly as possible, the construction can take place. And if we're in a situation where we'll need, for example, annual doses of a COVID vaccine. The science is not yet clear if that'll be necessary. We'll be able to have a much more robust domestic biomanufacturing capacity than exists today. And that's great news for the future. But Minister, your government keeps blaming that the closures in 2008 and 2012 under the Harper government, that was a totally different type of vaccine. I mean, right now, Canada does make vaccines. We make flu vaccines, but it's not the kind of technology that we need now. Why didn't your government move earlier in the pandemic to invest in that specific type of technology? And, and, and we did, Mercedes. I mean, the pandemic, obviously, you'll remember in those weeks in March and April, the urgency was the public health measures. The urgency was the economic measures to support Canadians during those 
widespread lockdowns. Uh, those steps were taken, but at the same time, the National Research Council, my colleague Navdi Baines, the Minister of Innovation, worked quickly to ensure that we were ramping up the domestic biomanufacturing capacity. The Prime Minister made an announcement in August, but unfortunately, the level of, uh, of safety and the, and the scale required to biomanufacture something as complicated, for example, as a COVID vaccine, many of it, as you noted, is a novel technology. That's why there's a sort of global race to perfect that technology and to evaluate it in terms of its safety and effectiveness. That work's going on, but at the same time, we're getting ready to be able to have large-scale biomanufacturing in Canada as well. Minister, I'm going to ask you to put your, your name on the line a little bit here. Uh, your government has said, and, and you're saying here today, that the reason why other countries are going to get the vaccine ahead of Canada is because they have domestic manufacturing capability. Canada did sign contracts for those vaccines, though, much later than most countries. In fact, it was weeks later, and there was questions about whether that would affect when we got the vaccine. Can you guarantee Canadians that no country that does not, that, that, that does not have this sort of manufacturing capability will get it ahead of us, and that this has nothing to do with the timeline on which your government signed those contracts? Mercedes, what we've said from the beginning is that Canada aggressively uh, pursued uh, a, a large portfolio, these seven different potential vaccines, three of which, as I say, appear to be amongst the first likely to be approved. We have over 400 million doses under contract now, over nine doses for every Canadian of potential vaccines. So I think if you compare, we've been criticized globally by other countries for having bought too much capacity and, in fact, having taken uh, too much of a front position in the lineup, something that we thought was essential for Canadians. So we're very proud, but we're also very confident that we'll have some of the most effective and safest vaccines in the earliest possible position of many countries. But also, Mercedes, as I say, the work we're doing with provinces and territories, I think in a very encouraging and collaborative way, that was our experience in the First Minister's call on Thursday uh, of this week. Uh, we're going to be ready uh, to ensure that provinces and territories receive this vaccine safely and efficiently. Canadian Armed Forces will be playing a visible and an important role. So I'm very confident that it will be effective and efficient, and Canada will be proud of the effort uh, in terms of vaccinating our population. That I'm absolutely convinced of, Mercedes, and so should, so to, so should you be. <laughs> Minister, well, that's where my follow-up question comes in. I'm not questioning whether or not uh, you will eventually have the capacity to vaccinate everyone in Canada, but on that timeline, you didn't answer the question about whether having signed those contracts later than other countries has anything to do with the fact that we're receiving the vaccine later than countries that signed earlier than us. Again, I don't know where every single country is signed with what particular company. Those uh, commercial contracts are normally uh, kept confidential. It may also depend, uh, Mercedes, on how many doses of each vaccine you're buying. If you're going to buy five doses and somebody comes along and says they're going to buy 200 doses, maybe you get a better position in the lineup. I mean, all of these are global commercial contracts representing huge amounts of money. But the important thing is our government decided at the very beginning to ensure that we were aggressive and robust in procuring binding agreements so that when these vaccines are safe for use in Canada, as determined by independent scientific expertise, we would be ready to vaccinate Canadians efficiently and effectively. That's the bottom line. Uh, Canadians want a safe and reliable vaccine, and that's what the government of Canada is going to get for them. They certainly do, and I'm sure many folks are looking forward to the day when they can get theirs. Minister LeBlanc, thank you so much for joining us today, and please take care of yourself. Well, you're very kind, Mercedes. Thanks for having me on your program. Up next, our vaccine conversation continues with Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe. You're watching the West Block on Global. 
Questions and frustration from Canada's premiers over when a vaccine will be available to their provinces, how much of it will be available, and who will get it first. Premier Scott Moe, the Premier of Saskatchewan, took aim at Prime Minister Justin Trudeau earlier this week. He joins us now to talk about what his province is hearing from the federal government about when Saskatchewan can expect that vaccine rollout. Well, thank you so much for making time for us. I know uh, you're extremely busy, as all premiers across the country are. You had some scathing words for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau last week. Uh, I know that you've had a call with the Prime Minister since then. You've been very critical of the information that the federal government has been sharing with the provinces about the vaccine program, uh, about where you believe Canada might be in the line to actually receive vaccines. Having had the call with the Prime Minister late last week, did that allay any of your concerns or, or do you feel the same way? Well, we have had some concerns uh, leading into our call last night, and I would say there's still some some concerns as uh, as, as we f finish that call uh, last night. And those concerns extend, I, I think, in fairness, beyond myself, just as the Premier of Saskatchewan, but to many areas of the nation. Listen, the question uh, all Canadians want to know the answer to and what Premiers want to know the answer to is, you know, how many of these vaccines are we going to get and how are we going to get those? The Premiers want to know so that we can ramp up our uh, healthcare systems to deliver these vaccines um, and Canadians want to know when these are going to be accessible as this is the finish line that we have all been waiting for for eight or nine months now. I know Canadians are very anxious to have those questions as well but do you think it's that the federal government is refusing to share that information or that they themselves don't have it because the vaccine hasn't been approved yet in Canada? Well, there, there are vaccines that are going to line up and quite likely uh, the hope is that they will be approved and we see plans in place in other countries, most notably the U.S., where they're going to have as many people providing these vaccines uh, are approved in the U.S., which it sounds like they'll be approved in about the same time in Canada. Uh, the U.S. is going to have as many people vaccinated by the end of December as, as Canada is by the end of March. Um, so that's that's troubling proportionally. Um, the, they'll have just under 10% of their population vaccinated uh, this month. And we will have just under 10% vaccinated by the end of March. And that's uh, from the 6 million doses that the Prime Minister says we will receive in the first quarter. That will treat 3 million Canadians for Saskatchewan. That is uh, likely going to treat about 100,000 people from, this, from the province. So what would you like to see the federal government doing right now? We need to have more access to vaccine in a more timely fashion. Um, we have had conversations now for eight or nine months about restrictions uh, coming in. Uh, how are we going to uh, flatten the curve, uh, to use the term that we've used so often over the course of the last number of months? Um, that uh, can start to go away if we have broad access to this vaccine. There's a number of uh, candidates that are in, in the queue, um, and we... Uh, we, my understanding is we do have access to a large number of doses, um, but it's also my understanding that we don't have access in a very timely fashion uh, to those vaccines. And so I don't know whether the Prime Minister or the federal government has the answers uh, on when those products are going to arrive, um, but they should tell us. They should tell us that they don't have them. We need to plan as premiers to ensure that we can actually deliver these vaccines on the ground. What we're planning for now, I guess, in Saskatchewan is for 200,000 doses to be delivered to 100,000 people um, in the first quarter of the year and then ramp up after after that. What we would like is to see um, that number much, much higher earlier in 2021. I've heard from senior officials in the Prime Minister's office. They insist that the premiers are receiving the information as they themselves get it in the Prime Minister's office. Do you think that, that that's not true? Do you think they're withholding information from you? We received the information uh, last week uh, with respect to these 6 million doses and, and what uh, each province would be provided with on a per capita basis and uh, there's a few provinces that then uh, spoke uh, to receiving that information uh, to be as transparent as possible with the people that we ultimately represent in our provincial jurisdictions but collectively um, as premiers across this nation and uh, as uh, representing all Canadians. Um, so we did communicate uh, what we were going to uh, receive uh, but we need, we need to receive more and we need to receive it in a much timelier fashion. We are seeing um, it, what's troubling about this is we are seeing not just the producing countries uh, like the UK and, uh, and the US that are going to be out with full-scale vaccination sometime here in December, but many other countries that seem to be uh, gaining a, a quicker access to these vaccines than we have here in Canada. So uh, we need a more ambitious procurement program for sure. 
if those vaccines were ready in mid-December, like they're going to be in the United States and in other countries, we're expecting that's when the rollout is going to begin. Is Saskatchewan prepared? Do you have a plan in place in your province for who's being vaccinated first and how you're going to do that? Because ultimately, it is up to the provinces to decide how to deliver the vaccines. Right. We expect to receive the vaccine on a per capita basis. We do have a plan and we'll very much mirror what we did with our H1N1 uh, vaccines uh, a decade ago. Um, we have a plan through our very robust public health system. Uh, we deliver flu vaccines each and every year, for example, as well as uh, many other uh, vaccines. But we have also engaged our public safety agency here in the province that uh, um, is going to work hand in hand with our Saskatchewan Health Authority as well as the Ministry of Health. Um, to ensure that we are able to provide uh, whatever vaccines we receive um, to the people of this province in a, where, in a very well uh, laid out uh, fashion that prioritizes, of course, um, the elderly, those that are, are vulnerable, as well as our essential services uh, workers here in the province. That is very much uh, like uh, many, many areas, if not all areas across the nation. Uh, Premier Mo, I, I know that in your province there have not been as many restrictions as there have been in others. For example, you brought in mask wearing indoors as mandated by the province in November. Uh, you haven't seen as many shutdowns of businesses. During the election, you indicated that you were against that. Some folks say, look, yes, there has been spread, and there's been spread in Saskatchewan just like in other provinces. But at the end of the day, it's up to premiers to take measures to deal with that spread until there is a vaccine available. So how much responsibility do you have in this for making maintaining the health of the people of Saskatchewan until there is a vaccine. Well, we, we moved on a mandatory masking order uh, far before most Western Canadian provinces, and we have uh, increased our restrictions four times over the course of the last month as our numbers have been increasing. And we do have a higher than average uh, active caseload today, and our numbers have increased over the course of the last number of weeks. And, and so we have taken action to ensure that we're able to curb uh, those that, the rate, that rate of transmission. We've also done very well with respect to our total numbers, and most importantly, with respect to the fatalities that we've experienced here. Uh, Saskatchewan is far below the national average in both of those uh, metrics. But ultimately, whether you're in Saskatchewan or any other area of the nation, uh, the finish line, the goal line, the hope that we've all been waiting for is to have uh, this broad-based access to this vaccine. Um, and we are relying on the federal government, as we did with H1N1, as we do with procuring uh, these vaccines. Uh, we're relying on them to do just that, to procure it in a timely fashion, and we expect them to be able to procure it as, as quickly as, as other nations around the world. And that is what is concerning, is it seems to me that we may be slipping, uh, if not at the back of the line, but further back in the line than maybe we would have expected, or maybe even further back than we were led to believe on, on, a couple of months ago. Do you, do you feel that the Prime Minister and his officials were misleading about the vaccine? I'm not sure if they were misleading. I'm not sure if they if they knew the answers to it at that point. I'm not sure if they procured the vaccine in a timely fashion, if we were on this uh, soon enough. Um, this was discussed on our Council of Federation calls um, and our FMM calls uh, throughout the summer as to how this is ultimately the finish line. This is the goal line that we all uh, need to head for and we need to manage as best we can. Uh, the balancing, uh, the loads on our health care, the COVID infections, yes, uh, the impact on our, our economy and the people that we represent but ultimately, when we have this access to a vaccine, um, this is an opportunity for Canadians uh, to get back to some degree of, of normal life. Um, and what we, I think, would ask the Prime Minister to do is to be transparent with Canadians and Premiers on how much and when uh, this vaccine will be arriving so that we can deliver it to our, our people in our jurisdictions, um, but also be very ambitious in procuring it as quickly as possible, uh, maybe as quickly as some other nations around the world. Premier Mo, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mercedes. We appreciate your time as well. Up next, more on Canada's vaccine rollout. My interview with Major General Danny Fortin. You're watching the West Block on Global. Welcome back. On Friday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced Major General Danny Fortin to head Canada's vaccine rollout operations. He joins us now. Uh, Major General Fortin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, I knew you as a commander in Afghanistan when you returned from NATO. Now, obviously, you're taking on this incredibly important role. Can you tell us a little bit about what your job is going to involve? 
Yeah, thanks, uh, Mercedes. It's a great opportunity to explain a little bit what, what we do here. I, I'm so uh, uh, privileged to have this opportunity to work uh, with colleagues at the Public Health Agency and um, you know work on what is really an unprecedented uh, situation with uh, unique challenges. So uh, I had the, the opportunity to lead a logistics and, and uh, operations uh, branch of, uh, of the Public Health Agency focusing on the delivery of the vaccines throughout Canada. A lot of people are wondering, how quickly can you be ready? Because I was looking south of the border on Friday and we were seeing that down there, United planes and other commercial planes were getting into position, ready to distribute this Pfizer vaccine the second that it is approved. How quickly can the Canadian federal government be ready to start moving this vaccine to provinces across the country? So I would say that uh, the agency has been working for several months on the planning, uh, the logistics of it all. Uh, and there's, uh, while the, uh, the Canadian government was uh, acquiring vaccines, uh, a number of uh, things were being lined up. Uh, and for several weeks now, um, CAF members uh, in, in support to uh, the agency, seconded to the agency, have been uh, working on setting up a national operations center uh, the logistics planning of the uh, the whole uh, distribution from uh, factory or from uh, point of arrival in country down to uh, the point of distribution or the point of administration of the vaccine uh, throughout the country. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of planning that's been done for several weeks. And uh, uh, you know, people like me uh, who just arrived, uh, you know, I started here Monday, um, you know, the, the, there's a significant amount of work that's been done already. So, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting to see uh, and it's all, uh, you know, coming nicely together. Denny, I'm talking to you and, and you're a general. Um, should we take that as a sign that the military is going to be heavily involved in this effort? So we have a small team here and uh, in direct support to public health agency. Um, you know, so I, I'm just one of a uh, number of uh, folks here. At, you know, the, the military is a team sport. Uh, so I'm, 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 I happen to be the phase that you see, but there are people here who have been working uh, for a number of weeks. And what we bring here is, um, you know, we're here to bolster capacity of the agency. Uh, the agency is used to... Um, you know, planning the logistics of other vaccines and, the, and that distribution with the stakeholders and the, and the partners at the, uh, uh, with the provinces and territories. But because this is unique, um, uh, we have to bring additional, um, you know, uh, personnel and expertise and processes uh, that are proven. A specific uh, tailor-made uh, operation center is uh, being put in place. It includes military um, uh, officers and NCOs, but also uh, a number of uh, public health agency um, you know, employees that also uh, work to the same uh, common goal. Major General Fortin, thank you so much for joining us today, and we wish you the best of luck on what will no doubt be a very complicated and a very important mission. Thank you very much, uh, Mercedes. Look forward to talking to you later. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. For the West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and I'll see you right back here next Sunday.